Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jia Chen. I'm a first year PhD student at Drexel University. So today I'm going to present my research on uh, novel high order sensitivities of secondary organic aerosols with respect to their precursor concentrations using a box model. So before diving into um, the novel method that we developed for CMAC, let me just briefly introduce uh, some of the traditional method of calculating sensitivities. So the first one is the simplest one, it's the finite difference method, often called the brute force method. It is easy to implement and understand, but also are prone to errors. So the idea behind finite difference method is very simple. Uh, we apply a perturbation to the desired uh, input variable. Then we can estimate the first and second order sensitivities um, while using the terms in the uh, Taylor expansion. Uh, so the advantages of this method is that it is easy to under understand and it, it is also very easy to implement. So the two major disadvantages are, are uh, truncation error, uh, which comes from the fact that we are ignoring all the uh, higher order terms in the uh, uh, Taylor expansion. And this can be reduced by reducing the uh, perturbation size. Uh, but when we reduce the perturbation size, another error occur. Uh, this is the uh, cancellation error. So in this case, um, when H is very small, uh, computers will have a hard time distinguishing this FXI plus H right here and FXI minus H. So uh, the computers will think that these two numbers are the same and the numerator will be zero and our sensitivity information will also be zero, which is incorrect. So there are also advanced methods such as the uh, direct decouple method and the adjoint method. They are accurate, but they also have limitations. So the advantages of this method are you can get, we can get exact first and second order sensitivities in certain cases. And the adjoint also has the advantage of calculating sensitivities of one output variable with respect to many input variables. So the other methods are we can get the uh, sensitivities of many output variables with respect to one input variables. So this is one of the major advantage, advantages of the adjoint method. But either is more difficult to understand and implement uh, than brute force methods. Uh, for DDM, we also need to write sensitivity equations uh, for nonlinear steps, which are very common in chemistry and vector steps. This makes uh, DDM models very hard to update uh, when the equations change. So, um, because uh, we need to write new equations when the equations change, there's also there's sometimes a delay uh, between the uh, newest version of the actual model and the DDM version of the actual model. Um, so we can calculate uh, the first and second order sensitivities using something called hyperdual numbers. So let me just give a brief introduction of hyperdual numbers. And um, a hyperdual number is defined as follows. Well. This big H right here is equal to X zero plus, plus three, three non-real parts. And um, one of the uh, key characteristics of hyperdual number is that the, um, the epsilon one square, epsilon two square, and epsilon one two square are equal to zero, but they themselves are not equal to zero. So this is actually quite similar to uh, imaginary numbers in which we have um, I square equal to negative one, but I doesn't equal to anything in the real space. So if we perturb the uh, desired input variable with the hyperdual number below, this h sub h, um, then we'll get the uh, perturbed function, which is basically f of x plus the, this h sub h right here. So um, if we expand the terms with Taylor expansion, similar to what we have done for uh, finite difference, uh, we'll be able to get the term on the right, right of the equation right here. So f of x doesn't change. The results are, uh, the real results uh, preserve. And um, we'll be able to get the first order sensitivity information in either the epsilon one or epsilon two part of the output. Then for the second order sensitivity information, if we expand this uh, bracket, uh, this square bracket right here, we'll be able to find out that all of the uh, sensitivity information are in the epsilon one, two part. 
And for all of the higher order sensitivities, they will either contain, they will contain epsilon one square or epsilon two square or epsilon one two square, which will make them to be zero. So all of the higher order terms will cancel out. Then we'll be able to find the uh, first and second order sensitivities as below. So the first order sensitivity is simply uh, the epsilon one part of the output divided by H1. Uh, or the epsilon 2 part of the output divided by H2. And the second order sensitivity um, will be in the epsilon 1, 2 part. And uh, just divide by H1 multiplied by H2. We'll, get, we'll be able to get the second order sensitivity. We can also calculate uh, cross sensitivities uh, basically by uh, instead of perturbing uh, the epsilon 1 part and epsilon 2 part at the same time, we can um, give a perturbation to the epsilon one part of one variable, then do the perturbation of the epsilon two part of the other variable. Then we'll be able to find the um, first, first two first order sensitivities actually for both for either of the variable, and also their cross sensitivity is very similar to the uh, to the uh, implementation of finding the second order sensitivity introduced in the previous slide. So to implement hyperdual numbers in CMAC, we need to first develop a Fortran overloading library for uh, um, all of the possible uh, calculations in CMAC uh, that may involve hyperdual numbers. So we need to write out explicit calculation rules of hyperdual numbers. So for example, the multiplication of two hyperdual numbers uh, uh, is shown below. And um, all the, uh, the, the DX1, DX2, and DX1, X2 parts have the sensitivity information, and the real parts are still the uh, actual output of CMAC. Then after we develop this um, overloading library, we need to change certain variables in CMAC to be hyperdual, com uh, to be hyperdual compatible. So we always start from uh, secret, uh, then, uh, something might uh, multiply multiply with C grid and equal to something else, then everything that involves a C grid calculation will be hyperdual. And this is a iterative process that we need to find all the variables that must be hyperdual. So there are advantages and disadvantages of uh, this new method of calculation. So first, it is very intuitive. Uh, it is actually very similar to finite difference. Uh, instead of perturbing the real space, we perturb in the hyperdual space and get the uh, sensitivity information stored in the hyperdual space. Uh, and there's uh, there's no truncation or cancellation errors that can affect the results because the sensitivity information is stored in not the real variable, but actually in different variables, and the calculation is exact. The sensitivities also do not depend on perturbation sizes. Um, we, we don't need to choose a specific perturbation sizes. We just need to follow the uh, formula of calculating sensitivities. But one of the major disadvantages of this is that it is quite slow. Um, in practice, it takes about six to eight times longer than a regular CMAC run. But say if we if we are doing the um, cross sensitivity from one hyperdual run, we'll be able to get two first order sensitivities uh, and uh, one cross uh, sensitivities. And uh, if we're doing a regular CMAC run, that will require um, definitely more than five runs to get all of the um, values right there. So we also developed a framework of evaluating the uh, sensitivities calculated by the hyperdual model and also from uh, central difference of the uh, real model. So for brute force for the brute force case or the central difference case, we perturb the uh, first pair concentrations of a specific species at time equal to zero. Then we run the model twice with positive and negative perturbations. Then we can calculate the uh, central difference sensitivity. So this is for the uh, first order sensitivity. For the second order, we need an extra run of the um, uh, non-perturbed version of the model to get the second order sensitivity from the formula. For hyperdual sensitivities, um, similar to actually similar to brute force case, uh, we perturb the first layer concentrations of a specific species, uh, but this time with a hyperdual perturbation. Then we run the hyperdual model, 
and all of the sensitivity information should be in the epsilon 1, epsilon 2, or the epsilon 1, 2 part. So from this slide, I will start to um, present some of the preliminary results of our um, sensitivity evaluation. Uh, so at this moment, uh, there are still four uh, modules in CMAC that, that is yet to be uh, compatible with uh, hyperdual numbers. So they are cloud photolysis, uh, horizontal advection, and uh, horizontal diffusion. So all of this, these results are run without all without the four uh, modules mentioned before. So the first sensitivity that I'm going to present is right here. is It is the um, column sensitivity of accumulation mode sulfate at R equal to six, uh, sum over all of the layers with respect to an, an initial perturbation at layer equal to one, also of accumulation mode sulfate. So if I don't tell you the left-hand side is hyperdual, the right-hand side is central difference, it is really hard to distinguish between these two graphs. And uh, for these two graphs, we also did the one-to-one uh, -one line right here. So on the left-hand side, it is the, um, uh, it's actually the same with the uh, previous shown maps. And instead, they're just uh, plotted on a one-to-one -one line. On the y-axis is the uh, central difference uh, sensitivity. And on the x-axis is the hyperdual sensitivity. Um, on the uh, uh, right right panel right here, it is actually the uh, single layer layer the layer two accumulation mode sulfate concentration with respect to at r equal to six with respect to initial perturbation um, of accumulation mode sulfate at layer equal to one at r equal to zero. So. They are all on the one-to-one uh, -one line right here. Almost all, almost all of the points are on the one-to-one -one line right here. So after using the one-to-one -one line to show that our implementation is correct, uh, here are just some examples of uh, more interesting sensitivities of different species. So this case is uh, actually ammonia. Um, it is also some uh, over all of the layers at r equal to six. Uh, with respect to initial change in the ground layer accumulation mode sulfate concentration. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have the hyperdual sensitivity. On the right-hand side, we have the central difference sensitivity. And um, they, are, they almost agree with each other with uh, some minor differences. But the, um, the central difference case, they are these noisy points right here. Uh, but they do not exist uh, in the... Uh, hyperdual hyper sensitivity calculation. So these two are the uh, same, actually the same maps as the previous uh, slide, but on a um, shorter scale. It is from negative two to two. As you can see, most of the uh, values agree on the map. And we can still see the uh, noises on the central difference approach uh, right here and um, here are all these points. Um, so this is another example. It's basically um, the uh, second order sensitivity of ammonia with respect to um, sulfate in this area. Um, this time, this, the values are much smaller. Not, notice that the, um, the all of the scales right here are u to negative six, which means that this relationship is actually quite linear. Um, well, the hyperdual sensitivities are compar comparatively less noisy. Um, but this is just a demonstration of uh, calculating the sector sensitivities with hyperdual numbers. Uh, we can also calculate the uh, cross sensitivities. So th in this case, we have the cross sensitivity of, sensitivity of ammonia in the first layer only with respect to both um, nitrate and sul accumulation mode nitrate and sulfate. So this time the central difference sensitivities on the right hand side is much more noisy compared with the um, hyperdual sensitivities on the left hand side. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we present the partial development of the uh, CMAC HYD model and the calculation of exact first and second order sensitivities. Uh, in the future, we will continue modifying the CMAC modules to use hyperdual numbers. And we'll also apply CMAC HYD to understand complex problems which are difficult to solve 
with traditional methods. Thank you for listening.